Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning everyone. How are you? Welcome to the Saturday. <laughs> Welcome to the Saturday live cast Saturday roundup for Wiki Tree. Yes. Yay. We should Yay. call it the Orange Cast. Yeah. Yes. The Orange well, Cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go to Roots Tech, you will find Wiki Tree very easily. Once somebody took a picture of the uh, exhibit hall or the expo hall from one of the windows up above oh, yeah. and looking down and you can spot the wiki tree crowd because it's nothing but a big orange blob in the middle of that floor yeah <laughs> That's oh. cool. how are you this morning happy birthday greg yeah oh, thank you not thank today you. but this week it was monday yes i got lots of greetings from the the final live cast of the connectathon on monday morning so that was nice thank you for everyone who said hi and happy birthday that time because, of course, the chat goes by so fast, and I, I didn't read it all. But I know I saw some things. That was nice. Yeah, it was a good week. I sound better. L Lisa and I got together this week. Oh, good. She got, oh, her, yes. she got her secret Santa meeting, and we, we met. I drank coffee. She doesn't drink coffee. If I'd have known that, I wouldn't have suggested a coffee house. Oh, no. Oh, well. Oh. So we met. <clears throat> so that was fun. Good. Uh, I still do have a deep, bit of a deep, sexy, sultry voice. If I sneeze or cough or if anything gets on you from me doing that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. um, I, but you do gonna, sound a lot better. You sound a lot I better. I do sound a lot better. I do sound a lot better. I'm going to jump right into the question of the week. Okay. If that's okay with you people. Yes. Oh, wait a second. I lost my screen completely. What's up with that? Uh-oh. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> there we go. It's coming back. There we go. There we are. Question of the week. Which of your ancestors migrated the farthest? 76 Ooh. answers, like four pages, people. I, it was like reading a novel this week. And, and I'm not kidding. It was like reading a novel because the stories were that interesting. They really wow. were. They really were. I'm going to start, though, with a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek answer oh, from okay. Phil Phillips. And his answer is, tongue in both cheeks here. <laughs> is it as the crow flies, one transit? say northeast russia to the falkland islands that's quite a trip yeah that's a uh, uh, pretty big none trip. of mine did that he says uh is it repeated transits probably mm. a sailor in the old days mm. what about the iss crew so how many times oh. i mean did chris hadfield actually migrate to the iss for mm. months and months and months that he was out oh. there he lives there long enough that could be a permanent residence for yeah and how did he get taxed yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. so I, well, I know Canada got their chunk. <laughs> uh, some some great tales in these answers, and that is so correct, Phil. That's a great answer that you just gave. Uh, like I said, seventy six answers. I don't ever talk about the comment, but the first comment was really good from Gail Connolly. Before I joined WikiTree and began to find out about my family, I figured that my ancestors had come from another planet, <laughs> which would probably make me the least. Uh, at least tied for the farthest, depending on which planet they came from and, and what planet other members who knew no more than did thought their answers ancestors came from. So that's Gail Connolly. So Gail, we're going to start looking for your antennae. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of great answers. Um, and of course, again, you people were sending me off looking to, to try and figure out what the heck you were talking about. My grandparents immigrated from England to Australia twice. And this is El Par now. Steve Thomas says you're going to win because they immigrated twice. But yeah. the thing here is that she says that they were 10 pound palms. Worms. Anybody have any idea what that is? I've, I've heard that term before yeah. from about England to Australia, but I don't know what it means. Do you think it's a cheerleader with pom poms? I don't think it's, I don't think that's no, it. You don't think so? Okay, so I had oh. to look it up. Yeah, the it was. pound palms. That was they got free tickets on an airline or a ship to 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 migrate, to immigrate, to leave, to go, and the amount of the administration fee was ten dollars or ten pounds. Okay. And so they became the ten pound palms. Okay, but where's the word palm come from? Yeah, as in like in your palm, like. I don't know. It's P O M S. They, they oh. don't exactly. They don't go through the. Uh, the uh, actual etymology of the word. Ten pound palms. I don't know what, wait, wait. Palms. A glossy, 
a glossary of names for the British, including nicknames and terms, including affectionate ones, neutral ones, and derogatory ones to describe British people. So there we go. That's what a palm is. So it's a 10 pound Brit. That's how much they cost. They're just, so Brits, just a... Brits are pretty inexpensive if you get down huh. to it. Yeah. Pretty... So that was good. Uh, so her ancestors, El Par, his and her El ancestors, uh, early 1950s, but struggled to establish themselves and return to England just after two years. Then almost 20 years later, they again immigrated. Uh, although Grandpa hedged his bets this time, he sent his beloved car first. Rented that house out in England just in case, uh, and they had a good two years, but it was too long and too far away from home, so they came back and they left his beloved car. <gasps> That's oh, no. crazy. That's crazy. Um, and Oliver Spiegan um, was talking about um, how, let's see if I go down here, I'll find Oliver's post. Uh and this would be, um, that would be my father. He left Germany to go to Australia. And so he's giving me the kilometers because when I went to look for England to Australia, do you see this? It says, sorry, we could not calculate the driving, yeah, that's direction, a, driving directions yeah. to Australia. Isn't that hilarious? So yeah, I went weird. and I, I typed in England yeah. to Australia, London to Australia, and I got some <laughs> person's special maps. Oh, wow. Showing two routes that you could actually drive to Australia. One is up through Russia and down through oh, wow. China. The other um, avoids Russia for the most part and goes through Turkey and down. Either way, you have to go down and catch a boat at some point. But that's right. basically the migration pattern of the original aboriginals. Yeah. Yeah, and, the original well, people. So that's pretty cool that this route, this oh, lower wow, route. Yeah. How many Saudi hours? Arabia. What's that? How many, how many hours is that route? Okay. It's okay. Many. So I don't know how many hours. Wait, does it say? Oh, that would be cool. It doesn't. It just shows oh. it. Yeah. And then you have to imagine people walking it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, the, they've, they have found that the closest people genetically, and this, this is a, a while ago, so it may have changed. Mm -hmm. The closest people genetically to people in Australia are some people in India. India? Yeah, which is interesting. Well, they had to go through that area. They went mm -hmm. over here and hung out for a while and then on down through here. Sure. Kind of sure. that lower route. So that's kind of fun. I love migration patterns. Wow. So I, I, I eventually got it. To, to run and uh, figured out England to Germany and then did um, Germany based on Oliver Spiegan's thing. So um, the total mileage one way from London, England to Australia, whoever, wherever in Australia is about 9,000 miles one way. So wow. 18,000 miles Back and forth. doubled. And then these people did it twice yeah i think they probably win for the yeah. mileage yeah so i would say so yeah you had me going down rabbit holes we genealogists know how to dive down yeah, that's right oh <laughs> uh, let's see rob neff let me scroll on down here with these when we have lots of questions i really have to try and and catch uh just a couple gonzalo uh alonzo i liked his um if i don't miss anything it's my ancestors from wigtonshire Scotland, they traveled 1,100, 5,000 kilometers mm. approximately to get to Mar del Plata, Buenos Aires. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's, you know, that's a long way to go, Alonzo. Long um, and Lisa Gervais. Made Lisa! <laughs> I, I mentioned Lisa already. Lisa and I had, I had a cup of coffee while she gave me chicken and soup. She she brought me chicken soup and her daughter had baked a lemon oh. loaf bread. Okay. So I didn't even have a chance with the lemon loaf. My son came down, no. saw it on the kitchen table and scarfed it down. No. Oh, evil, evil child that he is. That's okay. Didn't even leave you one piece. Not one piece. He thought it was out for him because when sometimes we leave him. A food. whole loaf? <laughs> no, no, just a piece, one piece. Oh, oh, yeah, I can see my son like in a cartoon. Well, we <laughs> lemon loaf. I was thinking a whole loaf. No, I'm not that important to Lisa. Oh, bring the whole loaf. So, <laughs> yeah. But Lisa, Lisa, 
what's up with this? She says Canada is mostly a land of immigrants. We're all immigrants, you know, mm-hmm. when we get down to it. We all we all came from somewhere. Um out of Africa, all of us. <laughs> uh, but she says different distant French Canadian cousins arrived by the ship from France, also England, Germany. I don't care about all that. No offense. Ha! Lisa, I have Wellburn in my family names. We need to chat. Mm-hmm. Look at here. Thomas Wellburn. Uh, yeah, they came over much earlier, settled in South Carolina and upper uh, Georgia in the mountains of Georgia. So mm. we need to talk. Anyway, that's the only re- that's the only reason I bring Lisa. <laughs> uh, Rob Nash down here. Uh, my grandfather, born in a village on the southern Volga River, the Russian Empire, 1901. The family went to Georgia, USA by way of Bremen, Germany. Mm. Uh, stayed in Georgia six months and was a logger. Uh, After Georgia, they traveled to Central North Dakota, where my grandfather's uncle lived. Uh, So that was about uh, 7,600 miles. Um, His older brother died in Boise. What, what? Um, After 1917, we lost contact with a family that was left behind in Russia. This is why I brought this up. Uh, They were presumably starved, killed, or forcibly scattered to Siberia, Kazakhstan, during Stalin's pogroms against the Germans and other minorities. Uh, millions died in southern Russia and Ukraine because of Stalin. It's amazing that we have any people left in that area of the world. I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, and um, El Par says, thank you for the reminder of the ones who didn't migrate. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a really nice, uh, good mm-hmm. touching thing. Let's see. And I loved uh, Celia Marsh's, and we're still on the first page here. <laughs> I love Celia, Celia Marsh's thing. She says, Oh, they didn't migrate. They just wandered about. <laughs> they just wandered around for a while. Yeah. They just did a big walkabout. Oh, that's right. Walkabout. <laughs> yeah. Um, Got to go over to, uh, let's see, page two here. I'll be done in a second. Uh, and to Ross and Scott. Oh, there we go. My great, great, this is Ross Escott or Roz Escott. Uh, my great-great-great-grandmother, Honora Ahern, was 18 when she was convicted for an unknown petty offense in Cork, Ireland, sentenced to transportation beyond the seas for seven years. Wow. The convicts were all on board the Catherine by October 1st, October 1813, and she sailed for a week later from Cork to Falmouth, Cornwall, where her sh- ship was to travel in convoy with two armed frigates because it was the height of the Napoleonic Wars. Mm -hmm. There was a battle at sea and a French ship captured. Uh, They lost their escort and continued unaccompanied to Rio de Janeiro. From there, they crossed the South Atlantic Ocean, past the Cape of Good Hope, across the Indian Ocean, past Tasmania, and up the coast of Australia to Port Jackson. Three weeks later, Honora boarded a single-masted brig to be sent to Hobart Town uh, in Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania. Tasmania uh, they yeah. got halfway, took shelter from the gales, then were blown back past where they had departed from. Eventually, they arrived in Hobart Town. And I, I think this is the longest trip, migration trip. It's almost a year now at this it's, point. It's a year. It's 11 months. And going back and forth even I, I think this is the winner for the longest one and this oh, is wow. this is a third great grandmother i'm having a hard time reading it yeah, one two yeah. three third great grandmother wow. yeah I, I wonder how uh they know all the details like if there was a diary or a yeah, i know i know we need to go and check that that yeah. uh and i'll do that while we're doing other stuff this well morning. you know the, the, the good the good news is by the time they landed she only had six years left on her sentence yeah, and she married a non, uh, an emancipated convict, so she was okay anyway. I don't, you know, I don't know uh, what the penal colony was like in Australia. I don't know if you got off the boat and you were just kind of on your own, or if you had to go live in a facility. Yeah. You know, somebody tell us what went on. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Mariello is saying that he has one. Yeah, that does not beat Roz Escott's. I think that I mean, it's impressive, one. but. Yeah. <laughs> so that that is the question of the week that goes into my stack of stuff over here. Stash um, of stuff. Wow. Stack of stuff. Yeah, I've got you know I keep notes every live cast and I have this little folder here, this little folder. 
I've got uh, all the notes from every live cast that's ever been done for what wow. six years, seven years. That's very live fun. cast files. Yeah, there you go. The yeah. live cast files. <laughs> all right, so I have picked the question of the week winner for this week. Okay. Rob Scott, you win. <laughs> I'm going to go and check her out uh, as we go on. Oh, I wanted to mention one more thing. Okay, go ahead. Talking about migration. Uh, yes. I had worked with two other researchers, Jack Templeton and Ron Templeton, who had started the basics of this and had come up with the fact that there were people that migrated in my Templeton family. And I started thinking, huh, I know all the subclades for these people. I wonder if I can track them. And I did. So I started working. It took a couple of weeks, maybe a month, to figure out all of these people by their location, Ireland, United States, Kentucky, Missouri. The reason why I did that is I'm lazy. <laughs> Somebody sends me a long letter and tells me their entire family story, and they want me to tell them how I'm related to them. And that's very hard to do. So I created this little thing on my profile. Let's see. Let's go here. Oh, and we had another one that was uh, a, a relationship that connected back. One of the answers connected back to Chris Witten's earliest known ancestor, oh. who was part of the Montpelliard immigrants to Nova Scotia. Anyway, nice. Um, so on my profile, I I created this this cool thing where if somebody sent me a note and said, what are your surnames? So I need to know that so I can see if you connect to my family. Instead of emailing with people back and forth, I send them to my profile page. And on the profile page under DNA, it has my surnames. Now I mm -hmm. created this a few years ago and I had it on my profile, but now my good friend, Greg Clark has automated it. And if somebody <laughs> wants to find my earliest known golden, all they have to do is click on the Golden name and it takes them to my earliest known ancestor and all the DNA information for that ancestor is over there on the right too. So I'm lazy. I do things like that to make people not keep me involved in long conversations. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, isn't that awful? So I created this chart, this, this list of migratory patterns for my Templeton family and I would figure out where they were and which haplogroup they were connected to. So that if I had somebody who contacted me, me, say, from Pike County, Missouri, I could look at it and immediately know that they are a part of the R1B M222. They probably went through Indiana to Missouri, talk about immigration and migration, and that they originated not only in Lawrence County or Iredell, North Carolina, but Island McGee, County Antrim, Ireland. I can tell them that based on this list of the migration. And all of these are category pages. And you can also go and find the individual person's information uh, about where they lived and, and what they were doing and, and who they are and all of that stuff. And you can go and see my uh, great grandfather's profile if you wanted yeah. to based on that information from that name state. So that's a cool way to use a uh, category system to do work on migration patterns. So there you go. I'm done. Yeah. I'm <laughs> done. I'm done. Wow. So how are we going to follow that, Betsy? I know. Oh, my, lazy, <laughs> my laziness. Follow my laziness. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, so the profiles of the week... Um, Justin. following the, the first Wikitree challenge of 2023 on the Ontario genealogists um, is about notable Ontarians, people from Ontario, Canada. So that is just a great thing. And so two out of three hosts are currently living in Ontario, Canada. So that's great. We have Lisa, who's from Ontario, is in the, in the chat. Um, do we have any other on people from Ontario? Say hi if you are in the chat there. Um, but, but we anyways. got Brian from uh, out in, well, we we just we'll make him an on honorary on a. He's on. Oh yeah, he's I he's close by. Really he's, at least, he's at least a Canadian, so that's good. Yeah. My yeah. grandfather was an Ontarian. Oh well, there you go. Yep. There you go. I have Ontario connections through my yeah. Mechamoils. <laughs> yeah. So it's great. So the um the first one is our prime Min our current prime minister Justin Trudeau, um is the face, the face chosen for this one. Um, hey, Billy. Um, 
but there's a, a bunch of other ones. So let's just go through them. But it's funny that you were that you went into all you went into map mode because I went into map mode too because uh, I wanted to. Um, I to mapped show. this morning too. You I mapped had, and I had mapped. To add up all of those those numbers to try and figure out how far it was from England to <laughs> Australia. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. Of, <laughs> I so, added. You added. Wow. There you go. Okay. <laughs> So here's a map of Ontario, just in case you're not sure where that is. Um, I mean, they can zoom out there in, the, in North America on top of the United States is Canada and Ontario is that big one there. It's, it's quite, a, quite a large province because look at the size of that. We could fit um, all of Texas, maybe throw in a Florida and a Wisconsin and probably squeeze a few others around the corners. Um, and anyways, in land size, it's, it's pretty big. Um, though population wise, not nearly as big as, as many of the states. And realistically, the majority of the population just lives in this corridor right here in Southern Ontario in between Ottawa, Toronto and Windsor down here. Sort of, that's sort of the, the main, where the, most of the population lives, but there's lots of great people who live in Northern Ontario as well and so on. So that's where we are. And all of the, all of the places that are mentioned in the profiles, I put little pins in so that we can, you can yeah, see. Fantastic. I love doing that on that. Yeah. So you like zoom... sticking pins and things. Do you, you have like sticking pins little... and things? Yeah. Do you have any dolls you do that to? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. But, um, and interesting. So it didn't look like any of the, any of the people went farther north than Sudbury, um, which is fairly far north. There's a really right there. Um, no, I, I think that it's interesting, though, that, that Canadians consider Sudbury or North Bay north. Well, it's not. Yeah, because no. it's not really <laughs> north at all. But, uh, you know, it's a three, three, three and a half hour drive from Toronto. So for people who live in Toronto who don't like to drive that much, you know, that's north for them. Considering <laughs> north in Ontario is really about 10 hours from Ontario. Exactly. From Toronto, yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, that's true. It takes, <laughs> if, if you take your, our family had a secondhand motorhome when our kids were young and we went across Canada and when we did the West Coast trip, um, it took, it, it took so many days just to get out of Ontario and then one day to get across each of the other provinces. <laughs> it, was, it was wild. Um, but anyways, I digress, surprisingly. No. <laughs> uh, so let's go on to, here's Justin, Justin, my cousin. Uh, eighth cousin once removed is our prime minister, Justin Trudeau. And so, of course, being the prime minister of Canada and the capital of Canada is Ottawa, which is in Ontario. Um, I thought, well, that's why he got in. He got a shoehorn because his family is obviously French, um, French Canadian Trudeau, with the last name Trudeau. But in fact, he was born in Ottawa, on, Ontario, because he was born in 1971 when his father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, was our prime minister of Canada. So was he born at Sussex or was he born in one of the hospitals? Uh, my guess is in a hospital, but I don't know. That information is not included in the biography, either the French version of the biography, the biography, or in the English version. It just said Ottawa. So I don't know. My guess is he was probably born in a hospital, not at home. Um, so uh, th this is a really neat profile because it gives lots of information about his, his first ancestor of the, with the Trudeau that name arrived in, in New France, New France in um, 1659. So that's kind of neat because um, Lisa mentioned something like that in her answer in the question of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, his mother, Margaret Sinclair, her first Sinclair ancestor arrived as a native of Scotland. Um, went to school in Ottawa, studied at Collège Jean de Beboeuf in Montreal, and then he got his teacher's degree in BC, British Columbia. And in fact, he was a, he was a high school teacher for three years and taught French and math. Hmm. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, then went on, did some other stuff, L'École Polytechnique. Um, now, one sad thing of his family, he, um, there were three brothers, um, Justin, Michel, and, and Sasha, and Michel, the middle brother passed um, died in an avalanche uh, oh. disaster in 1998. So that was very sad. Um, and I think that probably affected the whole family. Of course. Um, he got into politics in the, in the two thousands um, and then was elected 
leader of the Liberal Party in 2013 and became Prime Minister in 2015 and still is Prime Minister right now. Mary mm -hmm. Sophie Grégoire in 2005 and have three children. So that is our current Prime Minister and an Ontario connection. The next famous Ontarian is Margaret Atwood, a 12th cousin, twice removed from me. Um, and daughter of Carl Edmund Atwood and Margaret Dorothy, and she's still living. So um, her specifics are generic, generic, generic size, made generic. <laughs> <laughs> she's born in the 30s. Um, Canadian poet. Privatized. What's that? Privatized? Privatize, yeah. <laughs> Privatize is a better word for it. <clears throat> uh, poet, novelist, literary critic, essayist, environmental activist. She's done a lot. And um, she's she's written a lot. She's, she's an amazing writer. Um, of course, many of you will be familiar with uh, The Handmaid's Tale, um, which is a, a, a great book that she wrote actually many years ago, way, way before when the TV series came out, uh, a dystopian tale of the future, of the future or a possible future, um, which has since, of course, taken off. Uh, but she's written lots of other other books like that. But she's um, she's a very she's a very smart lady um, and not afraid of sharing her opinions, um, which is a good which is a good thing. Uh, she uses that as a force for good and change. And we've lost Megs. <laughs> Or <laughs> come get her M and M's. Maybe she's searching for that lemon loaf. Um, <laughs> anyways, Jim Carrey is my closest relative at seventh cousin once removed, um, and through the French connection here, you can see our common ancestors are Marie Rosalie Lalonde and Pierre Le Duc. Who's your closest of them all this week? Um, uh, Edwin Boyd. Is... Oh, the bank robber. Yes, the bank robber. Oh, <laughs> Barbara <laughs> And who's your closest, Megs? Mine is Jim Carrey right here. Yeah, yours is Jim Carrey. Mine, I thought Betsy's was... Uh, the ro bank robber, Edwin Boyd, 18 right. degrees. And then Margaret Atwood's the next one for you. Yeah. Uh, mine closest is Jim Carrey uh, through my spouse. Ah. Not, no. even, not even close. <laughs> wow. So Lisa says uh, her closest is... To, uh, Jim at 12 degrees. I'm 16 degrees. So if you're at 12 degrees, you might be like a fifth cousin or something. I'm wondering. That's pretty close. He, he, if I go just from me to them, um, I'm 17 cousins six times removed Oh. to Jim Carrey. So mm -hmm. I don't mind being related through my Canadian family. No, no, that's right. So a uh, pretty famous Canadian American actor, comedian, artist, known for his energetic slapstick performance, The Mask and uh, The Grinch, lots of things like that. Um, but he has done some, some dramatic stuff. The, um, what was the film where it was basically they were following him around for his life? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, um, Truman. Yes. Show. The Truman Show. Yeah. The Truman Show. Yeah. That was, he was, there, there were some dramatic moments there too. Yeah. Um, he was born in, uh, just <clears throat> one day after me. Well, one day and two years earlier, <laughs> one day later and two years earlier than me in Newmarket, Ontario, and the son of Percy Carey and Kathleen Orham. Um, he's been married a few times himself, um, and he's still living. So that is a short bio, but more details can be found on Wikipedia. Fifth cousin once removed, Lisa. Thank you. I was wondering if it was something like that. Uh, next, we have Elsie Marie Knott, um, and she is, was born on the 20th of September, 1922, in Curve Lake First Nation uh, in Peterborough County, Ontario. Um, so there, and uh, she passed away at the age of 73, uh, 3rd of December. It says Ontario. It doesn't say specifically where, and... Uh, I feel like I'm watching the Big Bang Theory. All of their ringtones were the... Theory. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to American put American my... Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was the first... What's... Oh, that's my mother-in-law. I can't... Sorry, I can't answer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Call Julie. Um, do you know that you're in studio? <laughs> she does not know that. And I forgot to put my thing on mute because no, no one normally calls. But... Uh, Anyways, um, Elsie, back to Elsie. She was the first woman in Canada to be elected as chief of a First Nation. Um, 
and that what so she was born in first she was born in the first nation um when when was she first elected chief that's at 33 i think yeah there it is in 1954 she became the first woman in canada to be elected as a chief of a first nation she nice. was just 30, 33 years old and she held up held that position for 16 years hmm. she also held the position of senator of the union of ontario indians uh and a fierce supporter of her native language ojibwe and then she died in Curve Lake. So it should say Curve Lake. It shouldn't just say Ontario up there. And buried at Curve Lake Cemetery. So we should add that information. And Someone should add that to the profile. Elsie's uh, was one of the seven um, through the, the challenge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, had she been connected before or did she get connected because of that challenge? I don't know. Mindy might know the before and after yeah. stats. But right. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Canadians have a very different take on indigenous peoples and indigenous relations. I mean, you hear all the horror stories of the indigenous schools. Mm -hmm. They had indigenous schools in the U.S. as well. Mm -hmm. But they're really, the indigenous people are much more a part of, of their nation and acknowledges that through Canada, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're all learning. We are learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Gordon Lightfoot. Now, he's not my closest connection uh, degrees wise, but he's definitely my physically my closest connection because he was born in Aurelia and I live just outside oh, Aurelia. Cool. Yeah. And I'm going to a party for somebody named Aurelia at lunch. Are you really? <laughs> there you go. It's an Aurelia fest. Yeah. In fact, I, I often tell people I'm from Aurelia because they wouldn't know where After Grove is. Or, or 25 whatever. for you there, uh, Betsy. How many? 25 degrees. Mm. Um, so, yes. So he was born in the 30s, son of Gordon Meredith Lightfoot Sr. So the M in Gordon M. Lightfoot stands for Meredith. Um, <clears throat> and his mother is Jessie Vic Trill. Um, so internationally known Canadian singer, songwriter, guitarist, helped define the folk pop sound of the 1960s and 70s. So he was born in 1938 in Aurelia, Ontario. Um, and so this bio on Wikitree is fairly short. I just mentioned some of those, spe those specifics. Um, list some of his favorite, uh, or his best hits. If you could read my mind, Sundown, Carefree Highway, Rainy Day People, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Um, and his career has been, has been documented in a, a documentary, Gordon Lightfoot, if you could read my mind. Mm. Um, amazing, amazing musician. Um, there's some of his highlights. He performed at the, uh, he was the, in the opening ceremonies, of the 1988 Winter Olympic Games in Calgary, which I, watched along with my roommates when we were at, at our year of teachers college and he's one of the companions in the order of canada um governor general's award performing arts queen elizabeth jubilee medal induction of the songwriters hall of fame canadian music hall of fame lots of neats he's a great guy um so in Aurelia, we have a folk festival every summer called the mariposa folk festival and yeah, yeah and he was uh he actually was rejected from the very first folk uh, version when it first started in 1963. And in fact, when the festival started, um, there were a lot of straight laced people in Aurelia that weren't quite sure that this was the thing for them. And so they tried to ban it, but it kept on going. But he did make it in the 64. And where is my, I thought I had that page open. I had a page of the festival open. Uh, there we are. So here's a picture of him on stage in 1964. He's playing, that's him there. Mm -hmm. And he's playing alongside the Reverend Gary Davis and Mississippi John Hurt um, at a workshop in 1964. But um, there's some of the, this is them dancing in the streets in 1963. And you can imagine some of the straight laced Aurelia folks may were a little. That's concerned. not dancing in the streets. It looks like they're dancing on a 68 Corvette. <laughs> yeah. well, right. well you know it was it was pretty risque back then you know <laughs> um but anyways uh, very so, interesting history yeah so i don't are you familiar with the the song of um the wreck of the edmund fitzgerald oh yeah 
So I, it's a, a, uh, for those who aren't, uh, here, let me show you the map of Ontario again. Here we are. Ah. There's the map. Um, so this here, this is Lake, Su yeah, this is Lake Superior up here, right? No, no, wait, 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 here we are. There's Lake Superior. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so in the Great Lakes, Lake Superior, of course, is the most northern lake of the of them and the coldest and the wildest of them all and the edmund fitzgerald was a liner that <clears throat> was was sailing through lake superior in november <clears throat> i don't remember what the year it was um but it hit it hit uh, gale storms and and sunk and so his song the wreck of the edmund fitzgerald was all about the gales coming in and the wind blowing and the and the crew you know trying to save it and then it going down and whatnot um, it's it's a haunting song, but it's lovely. But at um, at a folk festival, um, which I go to, which my wife and I go to, and our family usually goes to, um, he, Gordon Lightfoot was headlining, and he was playing, but it started raining. Um, mm. So you know, we started getting packed up to to leave because it's outside in the park. Um, but he was starting to play the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, and I thought. Uh, so Julie had already headed, headed off to, to get to the car because it was coming down pretty, but I wanted to stay. So here I was, you know, in the rain, it was starting to pour down buckets. It wasn't lightning because they cancel it right away if there's lightning, but mm. it was almost that it was dark. And he was singing this song about this, this boat going down in the rain. It was just, it was amazing. How it dramatic. Was too real. <laughs> yeah. It was, bumps. Yeah. Yeah. It was wild. So that's one of my, best memories of, of Gordon and um, hmm. you're on first name basis with him. Hey. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the neat things about the festival is that um, along with the main stage throw show, you know, where there's thousands of people out on the, in the park, there are throughout the day before the main stage show at night, there are little wee, little wee mini concerts basically underneath a tree, you know, and people gather around and there's, you know, like, 40, 50 people, whatever. And I've been where in one of those where he's been there, you know, and we're just basically like a room away, you know, like we're that, I was not close to him. So. Anyways, I go on. Let's, let's, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Alton Parker is our next one who I do not have a personal connection or a family story about. So um, maybe this will go a little faster. <laughs> we're not worried about time. You're not worried about wow. that. I worked uh, a little on him on in the challenge. Oh, did you? Oh, neat. Yeah. Good. You know what? I wanted to work. I signed up to do the challenge. I thought, Ontario, this is my wheelhouse. And I was just so busy getting ready for the Connect-a-thon and helping Team Italy out and doing some sure. other stuff that I just didn't. The, the timing was tricky. It, it just didn't work for me. And I felt that was bad. Yes. Oh, well. But I'm glad you did, Betsy. So, you know, when, if there's something I've missed that you want to highlight, just jump right in. Oh. Um <laughs> I, I just worked a little bit on the weekend before oh, okay <laughs> and just joined her line yeah so he was born he born and born and died in windsor um married in windsor windsor all the way windsor um which is at the very bottom of ontario um right across the right across the river from detroit um but he which was cool about him he was the first black detective in canada so he was born on the 3rd of July, 1907, uh, son of Emmanuel Crawford Parker and Ida Joyner. Uh, got married in 29, 1929, that is. Um, initially, he was a mechanic um, and then worked at a car dealership. Um, and he was president of a, a, an association that helped Black people gain employment. And then he was hired as a constable at, for the Windsor Police Service, Service and then was promoted in 1951 and became the first Black detective in Canada. And he worked there until he retired in 1970. Um, so he led a distinguished 28 year career um, and he became a member of the Order of Canada. And uh, now this paragraph here could be reworded because they, they stay the, state the same thing a few times. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so I don't know if there were multiple cooks working in this kitchen on this paragraph, um, but it could be tightened up a little bit. But the important thing, <laughs> the I mean, all of this stuff was important, so you can't fault them for repeating it as opposed to omitting it, right? Um, but along with his police work, he also did other stuff. He was involved in activism, founding member of the apartment, living for physically handicapped adults, 
Um, and uh, uh, also got the Ontario Medal for Good Citizenship and a Queen Elizabeth Silver Jubilee Medal. Nice. His funeral service was so large that it attracted so many people, they had to broadcast it to nearby churches to accommodate all the mourners. Nice. So that speaks yeah. volumes, doesn't it, for his <laughs> yeah. research. Good guy. Uh, yeah. And I like this quote. He was a man who understood that citizenship doesn't give you rights. It gives you responsibilities. Oh, and I like that. He filled his responsibility to a T. Mm. Sounds like John Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So very impressive. Uh, then we have Beatrice Agnes Thelma Earl, uh, who was the daughter of Solomon Levi Earl and Sarah Ann Woods, born on March 10th, 1913 in Owen Sound, uh, and passed away at Hotel Dieu Grace Hospital in Windsor, Essex. Another Windsor connection. Um, so she, uh, she's a large three-generation family. Um, so this is an interesting profile. It gives all of the, sort of the, the stats and the details that you get, you get from all the records. And you see like every, every line here, every little paragraph, there's a source citation for where it came from. Um, so she grew up a large three generation family. So um, probably grandparents as well, uh, living with her. Um, documents when she crossed the border, when she got married, um, listed as wife in a mil military record when she was naturalized and when she passed away, but it doesn't actually give all of the connective tissues, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the stuff in the dash. There's not a lot of fiber in, in there. There's not a lot of fiber in there. No. Yeah. But luckily they've got a, a quote from, well, this quote is from the Gray County um, Museum and Archives, um, which gives all of the details about her life. And then there's also a link to an obituary, which would also give more detail. And I do so, hope that they had, well, if it was part of the week, they had permission from that ar archive to. So there's a there. source there. Yeah. That was quoted. So mm -hmm. from a, from a website or a publicly available. Normally we don't like to take entire articles and just pop them in. You just want to right. quote from them. Yeah. That, right. Even though you, you state the article's citation, mm -hmm. you can't just plop a whole article in. That, that's right. a copyright problem, but. Mm -hmm. John Tyner says yet another profile from last week. Yeah, John, we're covering the stuff. Yeah, from the we're covering the stuff from last week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So she was um, one of only three colored young women to receive. Uh, so she became a. Um, where? Uh, anyways, the more details are here, um, and I read them, and now I'm I'm blanking on them. She found oh, work in Toronto. <laughs> She's one of only three colored young women to receive her dressmaking degree, and. Um, then she all, in her retirement, she learned to swim. She had something she didn't have time to during her busy life up until that point. That's um, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Considering but there was a, there's so oh, much yeah, water like, here. When she got, what's that? Considering that there's so much water here. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can walk out your front door and hit water. Yeah, almost anywhere, yeah. Uh, when she first got married, they got wed in 1937, and they planned a honeymoon at the King Edward Hotel, which is in downtown Toronto. But they arrived. The hotel refused to honor the reservation because of their race. That's uh -huh. sad. Um, so they ended up staying with their sister and brother-in-law on their wedding night. So that's a sad fact. But mm -hmm. the honeymoons. Yeah. <laughs> Bet Betsy. Yeah. You have something oh. on your your desk there. I have something on my desk. Yeah. It what? has to do with Ontario. Oh, Ontario. yes, yes. Uh, oh, Niagara Falls. My Niagara Falls. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm in capital. Which right. I picked this morning just for the theme. That's great, right. yeah. So um, her uh, one of the things that she did is that she um, helped out with the local Black community and much of Grey Roots. Grey County is in Owen Sound, so that's on the... If we w went back to the map, I would show... I could show you... This is, it's right there. Wait a second. One sound is up here as opposed to down. There's Windsor. Um, so she helped out with the, the Black Roots uh, and helped out her Black community, the Black community there. So Nice. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Moving on. Right right. page here. Jenny Kidd, Gowan Lock. Um, Born in, born in Scotland. So in terms of migration, this is the profile that wins the question of the week for of the of the profiles, because she was born in Scotland, got married in Stratford, 
and then moved on and, and passed oh. away in Los Angeles. Oh, so, wow. And was yeah. she a med medical doctor? She was. She oh. was the first woman physician licensed to practice in Canada. Nice. What year was that? That was, so she was licensed in... Do, 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 she immigrated. 1861. She emigrated in 46. She lived, she taught school from 61 to 65, got married in 65. There. 1875. Mm. 75. She Impressive. became an MD. Um, and so she opened up a practice with another woman. Um, uh, but then she, at 82, she announced her retirement from active practice. Um, there was another rival that was sort of stealing her her patients, um, but she became involved in Bible, study, Bible studies, foreign missions, and the temperance movement. And then after her niece passed away, she moved, uh, they moved to Toronto. She adopted, or she adopted her niece's children. And then in 1908, she moved to Los Angeles. Hmm. But first woman doctor. Cool. And here is Betsy's famous relative, the bank robber. <laughs> <laughs> Edwin Alonzo John Boyd, born the 2nd of April, 1914. Should have been born the 1st of April, April Fools. But, uh, born in Toronto, passed away 2002 at the age of 88 in British Columbia. Uh, so he was the, a famous Canadian bank robber and leader of the Boyd gang and a notorious Canadian folk hero. Uh, so this guy, what a character. Was he um, one of those that, that stole from the rich and gave to the poor? I don't think he gave it away. Usually when you say a robber is a folk hero, that's the yeah, kind of I know. Yeah, that's true. I, I think his folk hero is just because he just he just couldn't learn or he just couldn't give it up. So age of 22, he robbed a gas station and then he served time in the Prince Albert Penitentiary in Saskatchewan. Uh, then he got married in 1940 in Surrey. So, so that's BC. Um, uh, 41, his son was born. But sadly... Um, uh, there was a bomb he, because of a bombing, his baby suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and he died uh, a few days later. So that's very sad. Yeah. Um, oh, Surrey, not BC, Surrey. Must, must have been if the bomb, like Surrey, uh, England? That mean, in a York cemetery? Must be England, right? No, York County, York County Ontario. York County. But what kind of bombing would there be? I don't know. Maybe he was making a bomb oh. to blow up a bank. Well, it's the air raid siren sounded, the bombing. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Let's look. Let's just check out the sun's profile. York, Yorkshire, England. Ah. Oh. How interesting. Here we are going down that rabbit hole again. There's the rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> there be rabbits here. <laughs> uh okay um anyways he came back he was back in canada after the war 49 uh his first bank robbery in 49 he was a lone bandit wearing a disguise and he was drunk <laughs> <laughs> and then acting either acting alone or with the help of other accomplices um it varied i guess from robbery to robbery he committed six more robberies before he was captured and imprisoned in the don jail which is in toronto uh there's a mug shot of him in the jail. That is not a mug shot. That's oh, well, no, not a mug shot. No, but he doesn't have numbers on a plaque. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, but then he met his other and each of his compatriots in the future ones had nicknames. Leonard Tough Lenny Jackson, Willie the Clown Jackson. Um, Lenny, oh, this is great, had an artificial foot and they concealed saw hacksaw blades in his prosthetic device. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> That's and then they used those blades. Like the saw... three stooges do bank robberies. Oh my goodness! So the three of them used those blades at, to saw through the bars and they escaped from prison. Okay. Then they met a fourth guy. How do um, they join the game? Get through the bars, but how do you get out the doors that are all locked? I don't know. I Did don't they know. saw through all the locks too? I don't That's know. That's funny. And then they they did four more bank robberies and then they were caught again. Um. Well, because of this, then of they... Of course they were. Of course they were. I and wouldn't they, run. They were sent back to the jail. But then they escaped again using the same method the first that they used the first time. They don't <laughs> check the legs. Okay. You have legs. to check the false legs for hacksaw blades. Coming in. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, but he was captured. So they were 10 days later, they were captured in a barn, except Edwin, who was captured at a flat where his brother was renting. Like, you don't go to your brother's flat. I mean, you go somewhere where they would. Oh. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Your so he was. Get, so this is the math here doesn't work out for me. In 1952, mm -hmm. he received eight life sentences and then, and Willie got a 30 year sentence, but he was paroled in 62. So how does he get out 10 years later after having eight life sentences? It's Canada. We are nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anyways, his compatriots, those two but who killed the cop, they were actually hanged in 1952. We still hung people in 1952 mm -hmm. for those offenses. Um, anyways, he moved to Victoria, BC, lived under an assumed identity, and drove a bus for disabled people. So I think he was making up for past wrongs. Uh, and he, he married, he, got, he devoted his life to a disabled, disabled, disabled wife, Marjorie, whom he met on the bus. He met so there her on we go. the bus. So, he you know. He probably gave up his seat for her, and that's how they started talking. Yeah. Because Canadians are nice that way. They're nice, yeah. So after a, a career of crime and folly, he turned his life around and became good in the end. Became Isn't good. that something? <laughs> that that is right. is that the last one? That is a perfect one. Uh, well, it is almost the last uh, one. But we should, I should have saved that one to the I end. know. Oh. The next one needs to be as colorful. Oh, okay. Barbara McCollum Hanley Smith, born in Ryerson Township, Muskoka, just a little uh, bit farther see, north. Peter Fisher has a really good comment about our folk hero, bank robber. Maybe they thought he wouldn't do much harm. Yeah, that's right. I like that. <laughs> that's true. Uh, married in Berks Falls. Um, and she is famous because she was the first Canada's first female mayor. Yay. So she uh, married a machinist um, who worked, uh, he worked for the Canadian Pacific Railway, which is the railway that connected Canada from coast to coast. Um, she organized musicals and worked for the uh, public school board. And then she became, when did she become mayor? She ran for election in 1935. So this was during the Great Depression. And she became the first councillor. And then she was reelected as mayor seven additional times. And as mayor, she always tried to, her entire ma mayorship was colored by either economic depression or war. Mm -hmm. And she always worked on, there was something here, there was a line about always serving to better the community. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so first mayor, we've had a lot of firsts. First mayor, first female doctor, first woman uh, Indian chief or chief of a first nation. Uh, the first uh, Alton yeah. Jones, uh, the doctor, yeah, police chief or detective. Mm -hmm. The first detective, yes, yeah. first black detective, yeah. And our final one. Uh, so this one may be also also up in the air for greatest distance. She was born in the Ukraine, Dnipropetrovsk, Dnipropetrovsk, something like that. Um, in Easy for you to say. Yeah, no, not so much. Um, and she was the first female athlete of the of uh, she was named Canada's female athlete of the half century in 1950. Wow. She was a runner, um, and lots of awards there. She went to school in Barrie, which is just down the road from Aurelia, just 20 minutes away. Wow. Yeah, uh, single daughter, um, and then uh, she burst into the scene. She was where, where did she, she did a she was working at she was working in the Toronto Chocolate Factory. Now that's good. that's got a cool job, I got to say. Um, and <laughs> she entered a hundred year. It was at a picnic, and she entered a hundred year dash. Um, hundred year dash. That's a long dash, dash right? Dash. Yeah. Um, on a, at a on a dare. She, she entered this contest just a, on a dare, and then she won. And she beat the reigning Canadian champion, and then she went on to compete and become champion herself. Uh, including in the Olympics. She won gold in the Amsterdam Olympics and also a silver. So there we go. All right. And there you have the colorful prose files of the week from lovely Ontario, Canada. Nice. Yay. <laughs> wow. Betsy. Yes. Um, you got, so you got, do you, are you going to do photos as well today? 
Oh, I wasn't planning on it. We're going to wait and do the photos at the end of the month? Or? I think so. I, think I do so. want to point out real quick. Can I share my screen real quick? Go right ahead. I do want to point out, where is it? Oh, let's do this. Um, duplicate. And then I'm going to go up here and hit this. I do want to point out that the homepage picture of the week has changed. <gasps> and and it Look has twice. Twice this month, I think. It has twice this month. No. So thank you so yeah. much. The the elves working at WikiTree who have been able to update that. I think it's important to update that photo because it brings more people in. This is the John Wesley Parker and family WikiTree featured photo. That is crazy cool. Look at his mm -hmm. hand. He's a worker anyway. Wow. So that's cool. So no photo of the week and I'll, I'll, I'll stop that. <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, so before I jump into the tip of the week, which has to do with personal categories, um, when we were talking about rabbit holes, it reminded me that this weekend tomorrow is the Chinese Lunar New Year, and it is the year of the rabbit. Is it the rabbit hole rabbit? Yes, the rabbit hole very rabbit. Very special for our us genealogists, and happy new year to everyone. Yes. Um, so if you were on Connectathon, uh, involved in Connectathon last weekend, um, you might have been working on off of a list like this. Um, and I will make it bigger. So something like this, where um, wherever the project is you're working and you could just had a whole list of possibilities of um, profiles that um, you could work on and connect and get your points. Um, and I noticed when we were doing the live casts that the two big topics were, of course, people were excited about increasing their CC7. Mm -hmm. And then this topic of personal categories came up. Mm -hmm. And I did not know about this. This was mm -hmm. very intriguing to me. And I learned that you could make something like this, your own Co31 category. Well, you wouldn't yeah. call it Co31. What would you... What would you call it? I would call it Mags Thirty One or Mags. Well, 31. yes, yes, I'm. <laughs> I'm using myself as an example. Right, right. Yes. Well, Thirty One is your ID. I wanted to make ID. that clear. I yes, to put that well, in a box there for people. Cat category colon whatever your wiki, your personal wiki tree. Insert is. insert here. Put some yes. some reference tags yes, there. That's and... Yes, yes. Cool. So. Um, I thought I would quickly, for if you didn't know what you could do on here, so I've created two subcategories. I'm okay. going to create a third one live to show you, and um, you can also add your pages to this, oh. which is kind of instead of going to your watch list and, and yes. So something. Betsy, what what? Why would somebody want a personal category? So it's a way for you to be able to quickly see um, where you can be working on your personal genealogy projects. So I see you've got needs, birth, baptism. You've got yeah. needs profile yeah. created. Yeah. So for instance, the next in the April Connectathon, I will uh, add to this list and I can see that, oh, Millicent, uh, she has uh, some children that I have not added yet. I, she has a husband. So I can, you know, go to this list. And if I'm wanting to work oh, on yeah. my personal genealogist genealogy, I will have a whole ready-made list where I know there are profiles waiting to be created. Um, nice. Yeah. Oh. So basically what you're talking about is categories or space pages of your own to-do lists. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So let me now go to, uh, okay. So I've, I've already created my personal category and it's very easy to do. Okay. Um, I'm here. I am in edit mode. Remember categories go above the biography heading mm -hmm. and there, it, there it is. All you have to do is en enter this with your profile, um, ID. And I'm also going to put, there's an excellent uh, help page, of course. So I would, I would have a look as you're doing that. Um, now I'm going to get out of here. 
Um, what's going to the, the the help page sort of talks you through the process. Um, when you save the draft, um, the profile, your new profile category, whatever, is going to show up in red. Um, red. To a rule follower, like, you know, it's like alert, alert. And it's a little bit alarming, you know, and it says, are you sure you want to save it? And you just say yes. And then you click on it and you follow the instructions and then then you'll be you'll be set up with that. Um, now, if I want to, I am going to go to Milsent, um and I'm, I'm going to create a subcategory here um, for needs bio. So. Uh -huh. The way you do that, I'm going to go to edit. And then add this here. Um, bracket, bracket. Yeah, category. <laughs> Everybody can watch me type badly. Colon. Thank you, Max. Backslash, <laughs> backslash. Needs. Needs underscore. I, uh, <laughs> bracket, bracket. Okay. All right. Ribbit now ribbit. I have done cat categorization. Right. I'm Ooh. going to full save, full save. and um, she's going to scroll up and see where it's red. Right. Right. Okay. Warning. 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 Do, not, <laughs> do not be alarmed. <laughs> Proceed anyway. Don't be alarmed during this live cast either. It's just crazy. I know. Save anyway. Save okay. any. Right. Are you sure? I'm, I'm sh okay. Now when I go down, now. Oh, there there, there it is. It's in red. It's still a little bit concerning. Yes. <laughs> We're going to click here. And and now you'll see a, a very familiar um, uh, box. Empty. Very empty. Very empty. Very empty. Okay. How do you know what to put there? Well, here's what you put here. So the first time, and you only have to do this the first time you create a subcategory. Um, so and category. this category. Yeah, cate category. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not like we're yeah. any pressure here. No pressure. <laughs> um, and then, and then I'm gonna do. That that's the 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 master category that so needs that's telling that's telling the system that this oh, page nice. that she just created belongs in the category co thirty one. Correct. Right. And I'm I'm going to go down here. I'm going to save the page. Boom. Boom. Um, now, if I go back to my and you can see this is the subcategory page. There's Milsent. And if I go back to my um, categories, there you go. There we go. Now you see before I only had needs birth, baptism, and profiles created. Now there's my subcategory, uh, my needs bio category. So um, I am planning to really use this feature a lot. I think it is so helpful for mm -hmm. um, it is. Your, your personal goals and not, and not having 12 pieces of paper all over your desk right. with lists of assorted sizes. Yes. And yeah. another personal category kind of thing that I showed doing the Templeton where right. I did personal categories for the Templeton name study so I could figure out those migration patterns so I can be lazy and not have to talk and, and send a thousand emails to people. That's so cool. Thank you so much, yeah. Betsy Poe. That is neat. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate everybody being here and we're not worried about the time. Um, CD said uh, this this will not self-destruct in 10 seconds. No, no. we're not worried about the time. <laughs> it does not. We're not. We got a couple of things coming up uh, on WikiTree. We've got Challenge Three. Uh, please help research for the Society of One Play Studies coming up. Uh, we've got a whole thing on the January Connectathon highlights. Uh, the biggest highlight was that uh, nobody fell asleep at the microphone doing live casts. Yes, uh, that's a plus. That's a good thing. Uh, win. It's a win. We've That's got good. a highlight going on for the Genealogy Ontario Ancestors, which we found out a lot about today because we did some of those profiles. Uh, and then Challenge 2 Week is the Connect 7x7 seven seven for the Society of Australian Genealogists. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, uh, that is so cool. We've got a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on. Now, I showed you a couple of weeks ago that a really nice way to figure out what's going on on Wikitree is to go to the Ambassadors Project and click their social media uh, information. And especially if you've got social media going on in your life, you can also help out. Here's that uh, link for that. You can also help out by posting on your social media that things are going on or join the social media team as a part of the Ambassadors Project. So we got week of January 15th up right now. So we've got Wikitreeers Hangouts, Connectathons that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, question of the week. That happened this week. One Name Study Tuesday. We've got lots of stuff going on. Friday night bingo. What is Wikitree? They don't have they don't have information about the live casts. Hmm. Oh, there we go. No, they don't have information about the date night. I don't see date night showing up in Friday somewhere there. Was it so replaced by the bingo this time? Oh, it may have been. Maybe it's mm -hmm. next week. Anyway. Date night's every other week, isn't it? It is yeah, every other week. Bingo's every other week. So, so you can go through here them. and you can find great uh, links and great information and stuff about the Saturday hangouts with links and stuff. Mm -hmm. Azure is very good. She keeps up on that stuff and um, all that good stuff. I did try this week to go into the Wikitree question of the week um, thing and plop in the uh, link for this week's live cast. So featured on Saturday live cast weekly roundup. Mm -hmm. So I've got the YouTube link in there. So nice. I'll, one of us will try and remember to do that. So it's easier to find us. And we nice. have somebody during the Connectathon say Saturday live casts. There are Saturday live casts. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah, there are. There are. And we're here and we we're here. Yep. seeing you all week. So have a great week. Stay out of trouble uh, and all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week. See you next week. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming. <laughs>